I'm having a, an incredible uh, chat. This is going to be a, a wonderful new series on my Performing Arts Review website with mover and shaker Nan Washburn. Uh, well, she, <laughs> music director and conductor of the Michigan Philharmonic in Plymouth, Michigan. She's going to tell us all about her community, all about her orchestra, all about outreach, all about the uh, wonderful things that orchestra and this wonderful conductor are doing in that community. Nan, a great pleasure seeing you. Uh, Finally, after all these years, you know? It's you know, you, time. you were at, uh, you were doing your grad work, I think, at, uh, at UCSB a long time ago. I only just kind of saw you off in the distance, functioning as kind of an assistant to Richard Rintoul, who was the conductor of the orchestra there for a while. Um, tell me about this community for well, let's talk about the audition that got you the position of music director ah. of the Michigan Philharmonic that time ago um, this is uh, my 19th season so it was ancient history almost um, I was living in Northern California and people have said so why did you choose Plymouth and as most conductors know you go where the job is and this was uh, not an easy thing because I was the only one. I think there were a couple of others that were in states close to Michigan, but I was in California. And so it was a stretch for them to think about that. Um, I came in, I think I was one of six finalists. You know how those searches go. They whittle it down. Um, and I had the unusual thing of not actually getting to, to do a concert. Most mm -hmm. auditions do actually do a concert. And I had to do a rehearsal and then it was down to two people, and then they brought me back a second time in April. The first time was in November of 98, and then I came back again in April. So it was not an easy job to land, and I am really, was really, really thrilled when I got it. And then I moved, and I moved to Michigan. That's a big, that's a big stretch right there, making that kind of a decision. And as you said, you get the job, you go. That's right. Cold <laughs> weather and all. And... <laughs> and like and let's just, uh, I just want to t touch on this for a minute. I'm going to send everybody to the wonderful videos that Michigan Philharmonic puts out. You have, over the years, created a tremendous marketing uh, mechanism with videos uh, that, are, that, are, that are really dynamic and speak to a lot of things. How, how did that come about? Did you just run into somebody in Plymouth that was a videographer? What? Actually, we, we have really lucked out. Um, those videos are done by one of our board members, Ken Kaiser. And he is the father of two of our former youth orchestra members. So uh, he kind of came through the ranks, but he is currently on our board and is a real hot shot for the auto industry, he travels all over the place. And this is his passion. And we are very, very lucky to have him because he, he brings in like eight cameras or whatever it is. And, and unlike what we were talking about, he can edit. <laughs> so, you know that is something he is really good at and he has something called the nan cam so he's got that set up and it it really it's it has helped us immensely in in getting the word out as to what we do um the strength of our performances and also a lot of the awards that we've won have come through those videotapes now so tell me really Tell me a little bit about the musicians, that, uh, the, the level of the orchestra in terms of, is it uh, semi-professional, is it fully professional? Uh, give me an idea, because, you know, many smaller orchestras are kind of a combination of the two. Right, right. Well, this has uh, evolved. Um, we are now a um, per-service orchestra with a union contract. Um, when I came in, it was more community-based. I mean, we still feel that we are part of the community. I don't want to make that distinction, but um, there were a lot of people that did it more for the social value than for the musical value. And uh, honestly, when I came in, quite a few people decided that they wanted more of the social and they didn't want to practice as hard as I had a was asking them to. Um, because with me came the, the interest in uh, promoting American music, and temp contemporary music. And that's not, uh, I mean, Standard repertoire is diff very difficult too, but certainly with new music, you have to practice. And and so it, it just, as I said, it, this is my 19th season. Over the course of time, it, things have just 
worked in this uh, direction, it doesn't hurt that we are sort of sip, uh, s situated between Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan, which has a huge, wonderful music department, yeah. and uh, Detroit. So we have, uh, there's a pool of, of excellent musicians. We do a lot, um, we have a lot of freelancers that are playing in many, many different orchestras. How lucky so, can you get? Yeah, that's great. The other thing is, you know, this is a natural transition that every orchestra that has an intention and a purpose uh, to move forward uh, goes through. I remember when the Santa Barbara Symphony, you know, I'm, I'm here in Santa Barbara, was, uh, you know, kind of, uh, how shall I put it, loosely knit uh, back when I was a kid. And sure enough, uh, as, as an orchestra progresses in its, in its goal, really, which is to offer the finest quality of music to its community, this, this kind of transition is inevitable. So I salute you. Well, and I think it's also inevitable if you put an emphasis on education and educational programs that generally have to be done during the day. And that was one of the distinctions that we had. Um, and we do have a very, very uh, large education program. And I think there are three or four school districts that are now uh, having us play our, our children's concerts and in-school demonstrations. Let's talk about that outreach. Give me, give me an overview of how, how you how, what was there when you arrived in 99 and how it's developed and evolved since. Well, the year prior to my coming on board, um, they had just started a uh, in-school in third and fourth grade program. It was just very minimal, and they had tried out one year of educational programs, uh, a kids' concert. But um, they did some things that were kind of unusual and maybe, in my feeling, not probably as kid-friendly as I would I, I, I do. Uh, you know, Mother Goose Sweet, which sounds like it's a kid's piece, but it really isn't so great for kids' concerts, especially fourth graders. So when I came in, I, I, that was one of the reasons they hired me, was that I really, really had already done a lot of kids' concerts, commissioning pieces for specifically for kids' concerts, targeting at that, at that fourth grade level. Um, but the other uh, element that I wanted to bring in was the element of, of fun and a little bit of um, the carrot at the end of the concert, um, whether it's the Pink Panther or uh, uh, Fairly Odd Parents or the, this year's uh, we have um, The Simpsons is, is the favorite. But in the middle, we've got, you know, Haydn or Mozart and, and Percy Granger and lots of different things and a commission piece as well. So we, we've expanded that a lot. Also, when I was in 2003, so just a few years into the job, I started our youth orchestra. And we started uh, with seven players. One of them, the, the daughter of our videographer, started with that group. And it's now 120 kids, I think, in five different ensembles. So uh, up until wow. this last year, I was, well, the last seven years, I've been conducting that as well. And I, I finally had to give it up because I just don't have time. And look, at that. I mean, you have just described incredible growth. Seven, yes. starting with seven kids. Yeah, and you have over a hundred involved in. I presume different levels of orchestras, yeah. something like that. Yeah, we two have or two. three orchestras, a flute choir, and we've just started a new um, uh, chamber wind ensemble. Nice. Let's talk now about audience development. What was it when you arrived? What is it now? Well, when I arrived, I think they were getting about a hundred people. Uh, per concert. It had really diminished. Um, it's an orchestra that um, I think this is our 72nd season. Hmm. So it's been around for a long time and it actually had a very glorious past and was a very large orchestra, very well attended. Um, I think when I came in, a number of other uh, community orchestras had started up and, and, and it really wasn't any different than them except it had been around longer. And I, I really made the point that unless we do something different, it's just going to be like everything else. And it, there's, there's no place to grow really. Um, and so I started, I said, the first thing I did is I said, we're going to do American music and we're going to do uh, contemporary music. And luckily our board president then um, traveled all over the place for business and had a load of frequent flyer miles. And so I asked him right off and he still does this, uh, fly in our guest artists and guest composers. And that made a huge difference, bringing in uh, composers to talk about their music. Um, I think the first season, there were, again, a few audience members that fell by the wayside because they only wanted music that they knew and older music. 
Um, but very soon we got people very excited about meeting a composer. I mean, who wouldn't give to meet, you know, be able to meet Beethoven? I mean, but we don't, we can't do that. But you can meet Libby Larson or you can meet uh, Michael Doherty or, um, you know, lots and lots of composers that we bring in. And we probably bring in three or four every year. And it's not necessarily from out of state, you know, because we have a lot of great composers here in Michigan as well. It's fantastic. Uh, and and, and uh, not to uh, not to get in too much detail, but uh, that was great that you talked to your board president into really helping a lot. That's a lot of money to bring people in otherwise in terms of an orchestra's budget. Uh, how about budget? Can you just give me an overview about how, it, how where you where do you get your funding sources? How are the grants going? How does that work? Well, as you know, any Thing in this business is is difficult it's it's always a challenge certainly we get more uh, funding because of our education programs um, also because we've emphasized uh, various multicultural programs so we've gotten some grants from that as well um, individual donors some very very uh, prominent donors that have very hel helped us a lot um, so when I first came in the budget was probably I think it was a little under two hundred thousand and we we keep hoping we're going to get big 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 but uh we 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 spend our our money wisely i would say and uh, make it go as far as we can but it's a little over 500 at this point so it's not a huge budget but uh we're uh uh you know very very uh focused in our energies and uh we don't like for example i don't pay uh, very much for guest artists i just tell people i don't have i'm investing it in the orchestra and in the music that we have to rent and various other things. Uh, so it we stretch it as far as we can. And the uh, guest artists and composers that you uh, bring in for new commission works, they love every every bit of it. Tell me about all the awards you and the orchestra have won over the years. T just to give me a little lineup. Well, I, I've been doing this for many years. So through many orchestras, um, I'm, I'm sad that they're no longer giving the awards, but ASCAP, for many, many years gave awards for adventures and programming of contemporary music. And all totaled through, starting with the Women's Philharmonic in San Francisco, uh, the Camellia Symphony in Sacramento, um, Orchestra Sonoma in the Sonoma County. And uh, so I, all total, I've gotten 19 of those. Uh, so that's a lot. Um, we've also gotten, uh, I got um, the American Prize in conducting for myself a couple of years ago. The orchestras come in a couple times at second place. And then this last year, they made a, a new award, uh, the Ernst Bacon Memorial Award for Performance of American Music. And even the director of the um, of the Amer American Prize said, you know, you probably should apply for that. And we did, and we won. We, we got the top prize. So that was very, very special because that's that's who we are. And that, that spoke volumes, especially because it wasn't just orchestras. There were like opera companies and other ensembles wow. in all competing uh, for this award. Wow. Congratulations. Bravo. Thank you. How about uh, how many concerts do you do in a year of just the regular subscription season? Let's add pops and things like that. How does that budget work spread out in terms of concerts? It's about eight. We fluctuate between eight and nine, but then we do um, a fair amount of uh, contracted services uh, where we get either um, uh, offers to do repeat concerts in a neighboring um, uh, community or uh, what's really taken off are the summer programs. Um, we've got a wonderful partnership with the, the Metro Parks in um, the Southeast Michigan area, and these are huge, big, big beautiful parks um, and last year it was their 75th anniversary so they decided to splurge a little bit and they hired us for four uh, different metro parks I mean, these are quite a bit of a hike sometimes they're an hour hour and a half away to get to it um, and we have to have a, a, a stage light sound yeah. but uh, one of the parks where we've gone for probably the last six years uh, Kensington Metro Park Last year we drew, we drew um, I think it was eleven thousand people. It was huge, and it, to the point where some of our musicians couldn't get into the parking lot, and they kept saying, "Oh, but I have to play, I have to play," <laughs> and uh, that was very exciting. Uh, you, you you know you are describing uh, honestly triumph after triumph after triumph. Now let's talk about the gorilla in the room. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I, you know, I'm a conductor, you know, I think I can still call myself that a bit. Uh, and uh, it's been a very much, very much of a man's world. I can remember not so very long ago when uh, people, women conductors were, you know, really denigrated. Mm -hmm. Now I see all over the United States and Canada as well, really many, many more women conductors Tell me your story. How 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 difficult was it when when people in your community said, "What? This is a woman conducting our orchestra." How 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 hard was that to turn that attitude around? Uh, it's been a challenge. Yeah, and just even uh, given my age demographic, um, I, you know, I I can tell you the war stories way back. You know, <laughs> trying to get management, and they go, "No, no, no, no. We already have our woman conductor on the roster." So they would have 20 men, but, you know, um, but I, I, you know, yes, certainly there was um, a little bit of concern when I, I came in. Um, I, did, I, I pulled that out. There was an article about hiring first woman conductor and and there were a few people skeptical, but I have just tried to work just very hard and just do everything I can to just serve the music and serve the community. And, you know, at a certain point, they can't. They can't tell you you can't conduct if if you're doing it. <laughs> and, you know, it's just <laughs> it's so, a, it, uh, the idea of fat accompli. You know, yeah, it's just like okay. I remember uh, one of my first jobs in Sacramento as music director. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, my concert master told me. She said, "Well, you know, the word out there is that you became a conductor to show up men." And I said, "What?" I mean, it just like never ever occurred to me. I mean, it, this is too hard a business, and too you know how hard it is to conduct anything. It, that's all you're thinking about is just doing the thing. So that was kind of interesting, slightly amusing, but not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want I wanted to bring it up because my next interview is with another woman conductor. Wonderful. Uh, and I'm really thrilled about about this transition. And, you know, as as all will hear when they even come, I'm going to put up your website, all the rest of it, so that they can hear this orchestra. It really comes down to musicianship. If the music making is at a high standard, it doesn't matter whether right. it's a, a, ro a dog, a robot, a man, a woman, whatever. <laughs> but I, I, I myself am, uh, you know, really, really thrilled that this barrier has finally come down uh, and, and more and more so uh, in this I country. am too. Yeah, so. It's, it's been a, a, you know, a transition and I remember even my early conducting teachers were having a little bit of a struggle as to how I was, I mean, at that time I was so slight and so small, I mean, how to get a big sound. And I could see, you know, the first time I was go, go in front of an orchestra and it still happens now any new brass player sometimes will look at me and, and think, oh, I don't get to play loud anymore. And then they don't think that at the end of the rehearsal. But I had trouble figuring out with my gestures and such how to make a sound. And and it, it was different for um, a lot of my male colleagues. Not exclusively. Everybody has to find their own sound with their own body and their own face. and their. Every, I mean, it, it's so individualized. And uh, I, I was just happy because just recently, just this week, I was contacted by a young woman conductor who wants to study with me specifically because probably she wants some pointers in that direction. So Excellent. that makes me very happy. Excellent. Uh, have we left anything out? You, have, you want to mention anything that I've forgotten to ask you? Well, just that, you know, with the programming, I, I am always going for a balance and, and thematic links to make it very interesting. So if I want to do also women composers, because I worked so many years with the uh, Women's Philharmonic, um, we've done, uh, I think there's over 65 uh, works by women composers in the time that I've been here, over 43 women composers, um, and many of whom have visited. And so that's also become like a non-issue non here. So my audience doesn't think, oh, there's the woman con composer. Uh, anymore that they say that's the woman conductor. It's just uh, that's the Michigan Phil and that's Nan and she's doing what she does. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I, I 
I'm very proud of the audience coming along um, and really looking forward to to those new pieces. And uh, I'm actually now figuring out the the final touches for um, the 18-19 season. Yeah, you have to be a couple steps ahead. Always. Yeah. yeah. Nan Washburn, music director and conductor of the Michigan Philharmonic, a woman whom I have watched, I, as I've told you many times, I think you are an absolutely brilliant conductor. I, I just love watching you conduct, seriously. It's been a great pleasure, and you are indeed a mover and shaker in your communi community. Uh, I think we're done. Many, right. many, many, many thanks, man. Thank you.